ladies and gentlemen, tonight or today, this is a person that uh, I had privilege to meet uh, in 1985 uh, under unusual circumstances to meet uh, uh, this gentleman. And this gentleman, uh, he opened his heart to us and he was going through a lot of hardship. He had a hard time to, uh, to get to us to discuss problems that he was encountering. And this is all the problem. It was not a personal problem. It was a struggle that he was doing for our nation. It was a struggle that he was trying to talk about the truth of what happened to Assyrians in that country. And this country, of course, I mentioned was uh, at that time Soviet Union. We met him. Uh, he had discussed with us. He gave us a lot of information. When I came back from Soviet Union, uh, uh, lots of people in a lot of cities that we showed this uh, interviews and uh, information that he passed to us. Uh, a lot of people were enlightened for the first time. They discovered their brethren, uh, Assyrian brethren, that is in Soviet Union or Russia, what they have gone through. Of course, at that time, he did not reveal of what we're going to know today. And this is something that he is carrying this uh, pain and suffering. And you could tell uh, the minutes you talk to him, uh, he's talking about it. And this is indeed privilege uh, to not only to me, not only to this uh, TV program, but to all Assyrian nation wherever they may be. Because this is something that every one of us, whether you are in Australia or Turkey or Syria or United States or Japan or wherever, you have had a, a relative, a friend or uh, somebody who lived in that era and country called Soviet Union and of course this episode is in Russia but it was uh, in certain other uh, republics happened and we're going to discuss it in full uh, and I'm really privileged to announce it to you that this gentleman is Ilya Vartanov uh, now a very dear friend and uh, I am very very proud to have him uh, on our TV show and this is something that I'm sure not only Assyrians but a lot of uh, Russians, uh, Armenians, uh, Can I call you Ilya for, uh, because I, I feel like very close to you, that's why I want to call you Ilya. Uh, you're more welcome to our program, and this is, uh, as I said, it's a chance in a lifetime for me and for all Assyrians uh, to have you in our program that you would uh, discuss something that uh, everybody's tested to hear. Uh, we have of course, tonight, a uh, shorter time because your time is uh, uh, visit in the San Francisco is very short, and we'll discuss mainly about uh, the manuscript and the books that uh, you've been publishing and articles. Uh, and then later on, when we get chance, we'll go probably through a lot of other uh, questions. And I want to welcome you very much. Well, um, thank you, Josh. I'm really glad to be with you in your TV program. Well, um, well, I know that this um, conversation is about uh, my book that was published in Chicago in Russian about uh, the history of uh, Assyrians in the former Soviet Union. Well, uh, it is not uh, easy, you know, to talk about our history because it, it is bitter in Soviet Union. It, uh, because we suffered a lot, uh, but on, uh, on the other hand, we have to uh, preserve our history, uh, whichever it is. Uh, and uh, the reason I wrote my book about the Assyrians who were exiled to Siberia in 1949 is not uh, you know, to, to have a revenge on the former Soviet Union, not at all. Uh, I was born in Russia, and I grew up in that country. I love Russia, and I love Russian literature. And actually, actually, I speak Russian, and uh, as a journalist, I write all my articles, and my book is written in Russian. Uh, but uh, I understand that in order to uh, preserve our history, we have to narrate, to uh, write about everything what happened to us uh, so that uh, next generation uh, knows everything what was in the past, what happened to the Assyrian nation. 
so being here uh, with you in your TV program is an honor uh, for me, and I'm ready to answer all your questions. Thank you very much, uh, Ilya. Um, as I mentioned, this is going to be mainly uh, about your book that you publish it already, I understand, in, in Russian language and also Swedish, uh, Scandinavian, right? In Scandinavia. Um, um, yes, it was published in Stockholm by Professor of Ethnology Ulof Berkland in Swedish too. Yes. So it's two languages, and you have plans to translate this in uh, s uh, several other languages which are what? Uh, this book is uh, already translated into English uh, by <coughs> a professor from Poland and another uh, researcher from America and this book is uh, about to be printed uh, maybe in <coughs> maybe two weeks uh, from now it's going to be printed uh, in English in Chicago and uh, in Syria, there's uh, my friend and professor of uh, philology, specialist in Russian literature and language, uh, Ilyas Hadaya. He translated this book uh, into Arabic. And, he, and I hope that uh, this book will be printed in Arabic in Syria, too. Uh, as I said, uh, this book was printed in Russian in 1994 in Chicago. And sponsor was the uh, Bednahin Democratic Party, uh, Iraq, branch of Iraq. Uh, then, uh, about thousand copies of this book uh, were uh, taken uh, were taken to to Russia and distributed in Moscow, Saint Petersburg, and Kiev, and. You know, all uh, copies were distributed, and I, I only keep uh, five copies for myself. And I hope uh, I would like to have reprinted this book in Russian because I know many people uh, desire to have this book and uh, uh, read about the history of Assyrians in the former Soviet Union. This is a very interesting subject, really, and few people know. Uh, our real history in the former Soviet Union. And this book deals with our recent history in that country. So it's not only interest to Assyrians to know about the, the history, but also Russians who are suffering, who have suffered as much probably as Assyrian, but Assyrians particularly as minority, is a very small minority, very unknown about it. For instance, uh, Jewish history uh, in the Soviet Union being touched upon many, many books and many uh, discussions on TVs and uh, communication around the world. But uh, the Assyrian case never been discussed anywhere in the world, and you are the first person and extensively bringing this uh, all into light. Uh, it's not only interested to Assyrians, but also to, as I said, to outsiders, and particularly to Russian nation and uh, ex-republics. Uh, if you will, uh, Ilya, would you describe, now I read the, the, maybe twice this uh, manuscript, uh, it is indeed, uh, to me, it is out of this world, uh, even though I heard it from my parents, my parents from Russia, uh, they have talked about it, uh, many people talked about it, but it, I never thought it would be to this extent uh, that, you, uh, that you have uh, described in this book. Uh, Number one, uh, what happened that Assyrians appeared in, in Russia, I mean, out of all the places? Because our ancestor land was Mesopotamia, land between two rivers, today it's being called Iraq. Uh, we dispersed. Uh, I was born in Iran, my parents were born in, uh, in Turkey, later on to migrate to Russia. You were in Russia. What happened? What this... Uh, how long ago this three thing? chapters in my book deal with the background of uh, Assyrians. They tell about how uh, Assyrians used to live in mountains of uh, Mesopotamia, today's Iraq, in Ottoman Empire, uh, in Valley of Urmia, in Iran, uh, how they escaped from Turkey to Russia during World War I in 1915 
and how they lived uh, in the period between Russian Revolution in 1917 uh, until uh, the year of 1949 when they were exiled to Siberia. Of course, uh, the main, uh, the, the major subject of this book uh, concerned with Assyrian exile to Siberia. Uh, 